Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church this first Sunday morning in June. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for being here with me. Today we're going to be talking about the principles that you're building your life on, the principles I'm building my life on. Please stick around so we can talk more about that. But first, some exciting news. If you're in the Texoma area, you'll want to know that we have Vacation Bible School coming up this month. It starts on Sunday, June 23rd, goes through Sunday, June 30th. If you receive our newsletter, you can get all the information about it. It uh, will be held, held here at the church, 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 in Sherman. And it will be an epic African adventure that explores God's goodness and leads to a ferocious faith in Jesus. To register your kids, call 903-821-4505. And you can also use that number to subscribe to our email newsletter, uh, which again has all the details about Roar Vacation Bible School. You can always check in on our Facebook page, Leap of Faith Church, or our website, mylofc.org. Keep up with all that's happening here. If you are worshiping on YouTube at the premiere today, please use the chat function to let me know who's here with me. You can share the service, comment on the service. Um, and of course, subscribe, if you will, if you haven't, to the Leap of Faith Church YouTube channel. We are always grateful for your support of ministry at Leap of Faith. You can give financial assistance to the, to the ministry of the church by texting to give, 903-225-8774. There's a PayPal button on our newsletter. There is a PayPal button on our website. Use either of those, a convenient way to give, or you can just write a check to Leap of Faith. Faith Church, mail it to 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. And please know how very sure, how please be very sure how grateful we are for your supportive ministry here at Leap of Faith. Those are the announcements. Now let's begin to worship. We're starting with a prayer. God, our ears and our hearts are open to your call. Will you speak to us, God? Tell us what you want for us. Tell us what you want from us. Then give us the grace to answer you faithfully. We're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible lesson today continues in Paul's, uh, what we call Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. I'll read from the first chapter, verse 12, all the way through the second chapter, verse 4. And here is how that goes. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we've conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you in the holiness and sincerity that are from God. We've done so not according to worldly wisdom, but according to God's grace. For we do not write you anything you cannot read or understand. And I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this, I planned to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I planned to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. When I planned this, did I do it lightly? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the Amen has spoken to us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. 
I call God as my witness that it was in order to spare you that I didn't return to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, because it is by faith you stand firm. So I made up my mind that I would not make another painful visit to you. For if I grieve you, who is left to make, to make me glad but you whom I have grieved? I wrote as I did, so that when I came I should not be distressed by those who ought to make me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you, that you would all share my joy. For I wrote you out of great distress and anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. Well, if I were to ask you, if anyone were to ask you what principle you what principles you've you've built or are building your life on, what would you say? I guess first I'd have to clarify what I mean by principle. I'm talking, of course, not about prin p a l, not principal, the head of a school, but about prin p l e, principle. And a, prince and, and a principle, as I'm using the word, means a fundamental truth, something we can count on, something, we, something that's so sturdy we can build other beliefs on it. So if I were to ask you, if anyone were to ask you what principles you've built or are building your life on, what would you say? This comes to mind because recently one of my principles was challenged, overturned actually. This is what happened. As you might know, I was part of the United Methodist Church from my birth until the Methodist Church became the United Methodist Church in 1968. I was a United Methodist until 2016 when I embraced denominational independence and started this church, Leap of Faith Church. All that by way of saying that I still have an interest in what the Methodists are doing, I still have an interest in what they're up to. And so I kept an eye and an ear on the general conference that the United Methodists held a couple of weeks ago because on the agenda at the conference were changes that seemingly challenged principles that the UMC has codified since 1972. For example, in the UMC, in the United Methodist Church, a principle, a fundamental understanding of clergy behavior has been that a clergy person would remain celibate if single, and be faithful to his or her spouse in heterosexual marriage. Now, though I'm no longer a United Methodist, if someone had asked me if this was a general principle, a reasonable principle for clergy behavior, I would have said, well, sure. Celibacy and singleness and faithfulness in marriage for clergy, they seem reasonable expectations to me, a principle, if you will. And then on May 8th, just as past May 8th, I came across the news that at General Conference, the decision was made that United Methodist clergy are no longer expected to be celibate if single or monogamous if married. The new expectation, the new principle for clergy sexual relationships is, I believe, worded like this. Fidelity, monogamy, commitment, mutual affection and respect, careful and honest communication, mutual consent, and growth in grace and in the knowledge and love of God. That's what's required of clergy persons. Marriage isn't, marriage isn't mentioned one way or another, and I was surprised to, to see this. I was challenged by this. My principles, they were challenged by this. Now, I need to make it clear that I have only a casual knowledge of all that went into this change. Those in the actual know can speak, of course, with far more authority far more authority about this change than certainly I can. Nevertheless, I've had to give it a lot of thought. I've had to think about whether the previous standards for clergy behavior were indeed a principle, or if the new language expresses something about human relationships that is yet more fundamental than what was suggested earlier. We'll be talking more about this later, but for now I'll just say that I bring this up because of the part of Paul's letter to the Corinthians that we're reading this morning. In that part of the letter, Paul is writing about the principles upon which he has based his life. So here's where we are with that. 
2 Corinthians, of course, is a letter, a letter written by Paul to the church in Corinth, in Corinth, Greece. Things aren't so great between Paul and the Corinthians. Paul is not feeling too good about the Corinthians, and the Corinthians, they're not feeling too good about Paul either. There's been a dust step between Paul and a member of the church, and the other members haven't defended him in the way that they thought that he thought they should. And now Paul is needing some help from them. Help that he's not too sure they're going to deliver. Paul's been trying to raise money for the church in Jerusalem. And the Corinthians, who were initially pretty enthusiastic about helping out, well, they've, they've lost interest in participating. Paul is hoping with some trepidation to reinvigorate their enthusiasm. Another church, the Macedonian church, now they've done a great job of raising money for this purpose, and they're headed straight to Corinth on their way to deliver that money to Jerusalem. Paul can see that it's going to be embarrassing for everyone if the Corinthians don't come through with an offering, specifically an offering given with good spirit. For their part, the Corinthians are ticked off that Paul has taken to communicating with them in writing instead of showing up in person. And now here's yet another letter to that Corinthian church, another letter in which Paul is defending himself for not making a promised visit to them. And so, and so Paul writes this letter. In this part of the letter, Paul defends himself by talking about how he is living a principled life. Then he writes about what those principles are, holiness, sincerity, clarity, transparency, and of course, taking guidance from God. In short, Paul tells Corinthians that his adherence to these principles make him worthy of their trust. So what about you? What about me? Are we, you and I, living principled lives? And if we claim to be, what exactly are the principles we're living by? This would be a good time to return to the subject of the change that have been made recently by the United Methodist Church. Throughout my relationship with the UMC, I took as a principle, a fundamental of clergy relationships and behavior, as I mentioned earlier, celibacy and singleness and faithfulness in marriage. So when I heard this language had been eliminated and something else subbed in, I had to give considerable thought to it. And my thoughts, they went in many directions. I thought about how many years ago I was pastor to a person who was given to asking me, what if there were no pastors? What if there was no one authorized to officiate weddings? Would that mean that no one could get married? Now, I think that I know that this repeated questioning had a subtext, but of course the answer is that formal state-recognized marriage as we have it today in this place and time, it accomplishes several things, many of them having to do with legal realities like the rights of inheritance and property ownership and so on. Once upon a time, of course, formal state-authorized marriage existed theoretically for the protection of women who had no legal or political or other power of their own. For some people, of course, marriage still accomplishes this purpose. If realities like these were no longer present, then marriage licenses and authorized officiants, they might indeed be beside the point. But if perceived benefits of state authorization wasn't a consideration in marriage, if there were no legal benefits, for example, involved, well then, well then what would make a marriage? This is the direction that my thoughts were going when I was thinking about the changes that have come recently to the United Methodist Church. And then I thought about what the word marry might actually mean, what the word marriage actually does mean. It means to unite things. It means to combine things. Like, for instance, the band music here at Leap of Faith Church. It's a marriage, a marriage of bluegrass and rock and gospel music. It's hard, if not impossible, to say where one, where one kind of music starts and another begins, where one stops and another stops. They're interwoven, those styles of music. They are united in the music of the Leap of Faith Band. They are married together in the music of the Leap of Faith Band. And so I began to feel that the new language used by the UMC gets at that understanding of marriage, that understanding of what a sexual relationship with integrity between two people is meant to be. In the language, the new language of the UMC, one of fidelity, monogamy, commitment, Mutual affection and respect, careful and honest communication, mutual consent, 
and growth in grace and in the knowledge and love of God. Describing a relationship in which two people are truly united. Two people are truly interwoven. Two people are truly combined. I began to think that this new language used by the UMC gets a deep gets a, gets at a deeper principle upon which marriage should be based. One transcending legalism, transcending who has or doesn't have sex with whom. Now, while most of us, being human, are interested in human sexuality, for our purposes here today, all this discussion about the United Methodist position on it is primarily for the purpose of having an example to illustrate what a principle is and the difficulty of arriving at what is a true principle, what is really a, a, a fundamental reality upon which we can base our decisions, a fundamental reality upon which we can base our actions and our lives. But it seems to me that arriving at principles we can embrace is well worth any struggle involved. Paul certainly saw the benefit in his dealings with the Corinthians. Not only is being principled in general an excellent defense against any challenge we might encounter, as was the case with Paul and the Corinthians, but be able, being able to take as our personal principles those that Paul embraced. Holiness, sincerity, clarity, transparency, of course, taking guidance from God. Well, that's also a good place to find rest, a good place to find personal peace. And living by those principles, holiness, sincerity, clarity, transparency, and of course, taking guidance from God. Well, that's even better yet. Amen. And now joys and now concerns. Do you have some to share? 903-821-4505. Be glad to be glad to add them to the list. And I'm thinking just now of one person I spoke of who I needed to add to our list. If you have other names to put on this list to be read, give me a call, leave me a message. And if you if you have a, a joy or a concern that you'd like to keep more private, more confidential, just tell me that and I won't put it on this list, but on my own private prayer list. So now here's what we have. Please pray for those who lead our world, those who lead our country, those who lead our state and the communities we live in. Please pray for those who live in the military of the United States, especially Tyler, Jessica, and Colin. Please pray for those who are ill, injured, suffering in any way, those with health-related concerns, Christina, Clint, Dwayne, Donnie, Olivia, Jennifer, Ray, Judy, Marianne, Shad, Bill, Hope, Billy, Monty, James, Fidel, Miriam, Pat, John, Ned, Carol, Steve. We have two birthdays that I'm aware of. We're celebrating with Judy Flippen on June 3rd and Dana Condren on June 8th. We have other joys. So many people are traveling now that it's getting to be summertime. Please pray for all those who are uh, traveling by air, by, um, by car, those who are on ships. Please please ask that they travel in safety and be retur returned home safely as well. Please send lots of prayers for Fidel Rivas as he leads Vacation Bible School at Leap of Faith Church this summer. It's a huge undertaking, and we're grateful more than I can say for his leadership, along with the leadership of so many people who are pitching in to, uh, to teach and to decorate and to cook and to pray. Uh, we are grateful for every one of them. We're thanking God for the ministry of John Baldwin, teaching the intergenerational Sunday school class, the ministry of the Leap of Faith Band. We're praying for all in ministry here at Leap of Faith, particularly Brad Nixon, Summer Holbrook, Rowan Smart, who produced this worship service. If you have joys, if you have concerns, please let me know, 903-821-4505. And now let's pray. God, we thank you for the small happy surprises life brings, a visit from friends we haven't seen in forever, an illness that passes in the blink of an eye, a home repair that we complete quickly and easily. We're grateful, God, for every good thing that happens in our life. And God, we turn to you for your help with the complications that life brings, complications large and small. Some of us are dealing with relationships that have become difficult or annoying or confusing. 
Some of us are dealing with relationships that are breaking our hearts. God, show us our part in healing the difficult relationships in our lives, and God, help us with what we can't do on our own. Some of us are dealing with loss, loss of financial security, loss of health, loss of spouse or child or friend. God, show us what we can do to restore our well-being, and God, help us with what we can't do on our own. Some of us, God, are trying to manage change in our lives, a house we need to sell, a job we need to find, a test we need to pass. God, show us our part in finding the direction which we need to move. And God help, it, God, help us with what we can't do on our own. Life is complicated, God. We go along and go along and everything seems fine. And then from out of nowhere, complications arise. We do not ask you to do for us what we can do for ourselves. Only that you help us make decisions, choose paths that will honor you. We do ask you, though, to be generous with your help when we have in good faith done all that we can. We're asking you now to hear this prayer, hear our spoken joys, our spoken concerns, hear each prayer now being lifted to you silently for those concerns not mentioned out loud, and hear us, God, as we pray together in Jesus' name as he teaches us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, if you're a regular, if you're a regular worshiper here online at Leap of Faith Church, I imagine that by now you, if you didn't before, already know the Apostles' Creed. And I bet you know why it is that we say it every week, too. It's a reminder of what we as Leap of Faith Church believe. If you know those words, would you join me now? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I, be I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I remind you as well of our value statement. It goes like this. Leap of Faith Church recognizes a single class of membership which allows for all persons to be treated equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity, with respect to sacramental worship, service, leadership, marriage, and ordination. So thank you. Thank you for coming to worship today. Um, look into the camera and I see your face. I'm glad that you could be here with me. If I can be helpful to you in some way, just let me know. And I've said that phone number several times. Maybe you can recite it with me, 903-821-4505. But if not, just make note of it and call when you need me. To find out more about the church, our Facebook page, Leap of Faith Church, our website, mylofc.org, or of course our weekly email newsletter comes out on Thursday evening at 8.05 p.m. You can subscribe by calling that number that I keep saying, 903-821-4505, or um, uh, check, check, the, check the website for that number so that you can add your name to our, subscrip to our subscription list. As I mentioned at the outset, your financial support of ministry here is an important and appreciated way of ensuring that ministry goes on here. We are hard at work um, with Vacation Bible School, as I mentioned, not as a service to those inside the church, not exclusively as a service to those inside the church, but in an effort to reach children outside the church, families outside the church with the good news of Jesus's love. Uh, your financial gifts are one of the one of the ways that 
uh, that this is made possible. If you'd like to participate in extending the good news to children in, in the Grayson community, text to give 903-225-8774. Click that PayPal button on our newsletter or our website. Write a check to Leap of Faith. Mail it to 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. Thank you. Thank you for making Worship at Leap of Faith a part of your, uh, of your busy life. I appreciate that you do that. I hope that in the days ahead you'll be giving some thought to the principles that you're building your life upon. I uh, hope that you'll stay with me now for music from the Leap of Faith Church Band. If you're in the Texoma area, please look in on any Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. It would be good not just to look in the camera and see you, but to look at the door and see you coming through it. Uh, now go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with my spirit sword, standing on the promises of God. Join with us. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior is my all and all. Standing on the promises of God. One more time. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. I need thee every hour, most great.
my Savior, I come to Thee. Lord, 